yes, all planets emit, and um, you know, in many different frequency of the electromagnetic field, and you know, including the sun. For instance, the resonance frequency of the sun and the, the sound that it emits, it can be listened to. I think the recordings are on the NASA sites. And you can hear it hum, you know, this like low pitch, like it sounds like this. It's really, really incredible. And uh, yes, uh, the, it's literally the music of the spheres. And I think where the question is leading is that it implies that these spherical bodies, like the sun, the planets, and um, and others uh, may actually be um, hollow inside because they behave very much like a resonating bell um, which is hollow inside. Of course if the bell was full inside it wouldn't ring very well at all but these objects we uh, we listen to literally these spheres in the skies the other planets and the sun and the stars and our, even our own planet ring just like bells, including the moon. Um, and actually, when we land on the moon, they ring for a while, uh, and we can actually record it just as if we had hit a bell. And um, and so um, you know that actually matched some of the models I've been making of uh, planetary expansion including solar and galactic expansion and universal expansion. And the idea is that if you actually shrink the Earth, and this is called the expanding Earth theory, which was developed in the 70s, I believe, and has evolved. And, and you can actually go to YouTube and see some of those videos if you put uh, expanding Earth theory, um, where, where if you shrink the Earth some 60%, uh, I believe, the the plates, the the continent, come together very, very nicely, and much better is a much better fit than the continental drift uh, theory that's currently um, in the mainstream. And it's actually remarkable that it is not being considered um, more seriously by uh, geologists and and uh, planetary scientists. Uh, because it's such a perfect fit, um, and it matches better the dynamics, the physics of a spinning body in space. That that uh, that the continents would not all drift to one side and be lopsided or or drift to the poles, but actually that um, that the spherical bodies would expand. Now, um, now how is that related to the hollow Earth? Well. You know, the expanding uh, Earth theorists, uh, some of them that are in universities in Australia, came and asked me at one point if I had a mechanism to describe why the Earth is expanding. And, you know, it's a deeper question of why the Earth is expanding. It's a question of why is the universe expanding uh, altogether, really. And um, and it has to do with uh, in the model that you will uh, encounter in module four. It has to do with matter production. They may be in the center of the Earth a structure uh, that uh, you know in which a small singularity is present. Yeah, that's right. I just said a small singularity, a, a small black hole. And the same thing, and the same thing for the sun, um, in which uh, matter production is occurring, and so that um, out of the structure of the vacuum, the singularity at the center of the planetary body is actually producing energy, producing matter, uh, and that matter is being uh, pushed against uh, the uh, a very uh, large shell uh, around it, so 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 the hollowness of the Earth may be quite small relative to the size of the Earth, and the same thing for the Sun. But the result 
of the mass of the black hole in the middle and the mass of the shell is the mass of the Earth. So the Earth behaves exactly the way we see it. And so when you, when you say to a physicist, the sun is a black hole, he'll say no, because if it was, it would have to, it would have to obey the Schwarzschild condition, it would have to be some 18 kilometers in diameter, and that's not what we see. The sun is much larger than that. But that's all true if you assume that the sun is homogeneous. But, uh, but that's a huge assumption. For instance, a good part of the inside core of the sun could be collapsed into a singularity inside, leaving space, leaving, you know, a resonating cavity and, cavity, and then having a layer around it, which is basically the orgosphere of that black hole. So it's not really, uh, and, and the black hole mass and the uh, shell equates to the same mass that we see of the sun. So, so the sun would look just the same, it would behave the same, and actually you could start to explain things that you cannot explain with the standard model currently, for instance, the missing 80% of the neutrinos that's supposed to be emitted by the sun and so on. So all that to say is that um, there's a different model of planetary bodies and, and uh, solar and planetary formation that has to do with uh, uh, the structure of space-time producing singularity, producing small black holes, which I eventually prove are at the center of atoms as well, in the nuclei of an atom, in the proton. And so it kind of starts to give you a scale relationship of black holes. And the, and the atom is very much that, a shell with a singularity or with a, with a, with a nuclei in the middle. So you, you can even compare it to that. And that's really kind of, it might be jarring for uh, some people to hear this. It's very much different than what's thought currently today. But it has a lot of merit. And I assure you that uh, some of the math I've been uh, writing supports this very much. For instance, um, the idea that the magnetic field of the Earth is produced by a dynamo effect inside the Earth is um, not easy to reconcile with the strength of the magnetic field. If you calculate the surface magnetic field of the Earth and then um, move inwards to calculate the source of that magnetic field, then when you, in order for it to be that strong on the surface, because the magnetic field drops as a square of the distance, and, and when it's very high, actually in, high, in the higher rates, uh, at the cubic distance, but um, the, the magnetic field in the center of the Earth would have to be extremely, extremely high. Uh, it, in fact, uh, it matches what you would expect if you had a small singularity in the middle of the Earth. So all these things support this view, uh, including the fact that the spheres are singing out there. And so the music of the spheres is for real.